Welcome back to thecloudchurch.org. I'm Robert Breaker, missionary evangelist to the Spanish and English speaking people. Today I've got a message prepared on the subject of the terrible torments of hell. The terrible, terrible torments of hell. There are a lot of people today that don't believe in hell. A lot of people don't think hell is real. Hardly ever use the word, except as a cuss word. But the truth of the matter, friend, is there really is a place beneath our feet called hell. You see, people today don't want to believe in a horrible place like hell with all the torments and pain and anguish. Liberals have tried to water it down and say, well, it doesn't exist. Society has tried to forget about it. Atheists have tried to deny it. Theologians have even tried to explain it away and say, well, you know, it's just, it's just separation from God. Religions have even tried to bypass it and say, Silly things like, oh, it's only purgatory, you only burn for a short time and then you get out. But the truth is, there is literally below our feet, in the heart of the earth, a place where the flames of the destruction of an almighty God are kindled by his wrath. The word hell is certainly found in the scriptures. The word hell is found 54 times in the King James Bible. Jesus himself mentions hell 15 times in speaking about it. Jesus uses the term hellfire five times in the Gospels. Psalms 9.17 says, The wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. Jesus Christ gives us a warning in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28. When Jesus says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. Again, Jesus talks to us and asks us a question in Matthew 23, 33. And the question is, how shall ye escape the damnation of hell? You might be listening to this video and you might say, I don't believe in hell. I don't think that's a real place. Well, just two or three seconds after you die, you'll believe it's true. Because if you die in this world without Jesus Christ, you'll wake up in a hell, crying in pain and screaming in anguish. Some people say, well, if hell exists, where is it? Well, the Bible has the answer. The Bible says in Job 11, 8, it is, it is deeper than hell. Hell is deep in the center of the earth. Psalm 55, 15 says, Let death seize upon them, and let them go down quick into hell. For wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. Go down quick into hell. Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 2 says, Her house is in a way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Proverbs 15, 24 says, The way of life is above to the wise, that he may depart from hell beneath. Isaiah 14, 15, talking about Satan. And God says to the devil, or Lucifer, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. Hell is in the heart of this earth, below our feet. And down below in the center of this earth is where the dead go, who die without Jesus Christ. At the end of this video, I'm going to post what's called the sounds of hell. Many years ago, a Russian scientist drilled 10 miles into the heart of the earth and then put a microphone down to see what he wondered what the earth would sound like. What he found was, to say the least, very disturbing. For what he heard, he described as the sounds of hell. People screaming and crying in anguish, many different languages. Well, since people have tried to debunk and say, oh, that's not true, that's not real. Whether it's real or not, you need to hear it. So stay tuned to this video when it's over and listen to the sounds. For if it's not real, it's a good illustration of what hell must really be like. People from all different languages and tongues burning and screaming in anguish in torments. So what's so horrible about hell? Let's go to Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16, if you will. Take your King James Bible and turn to Luke chapter 16. I'll begin reading in verse 19. 
And what we have here is the Lord Jesus Christ telling us a story. But I want you to note that nowhere in the passage is it a parable. Many people who don't believe in hell, who call themselves Christians, try to say this is just a parable of Jesus speaking. But every time Jesus tells a parable, he says, Behold, I tell unto you a parable. But nowhere in this passage does Jesus say that this is a parable. Thus, what we're about to read is a thing that truly, really happened. And Jesus Christ is recounting a story of something that actually took place. And here in this passage we find the terrible torments of hell. I'm going to give you three things that I think make hell so bad. Three things that make the torment of hell unbearable. That's why you don't need to go to hell. There's a way out of hell. David found the way out of hell when he said in Psalms 86:13, For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. Are you saved? Do you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior? Do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that when you die, you're going to heaven? If not, you ought to be afraid. You ought to be scared. Because this message is nothing more but to tell you the truth today, that there is a place beneath our feet called hell. And if you die without Jesus Christ, that's where you'll spend eternity. So Luke chapter 16, verse 19. Let's begin reading about the story of a rich man and a poor man who died. And 19 says, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Now, in order to understand what's taking place here, I encourage you to go to thecloudchurch.org and look up past sermons and look up the sermon, Where Did the Dead Go? For in the Old Testament, when a person died, he could go to one of two places. In the Old Testament, before Jesus died, if a man died and saved in the Old Testament sense, he went to Abraham's bosom. But if a man died and he was damned, he went to hell. And the Bible here, as we'll read, we'll see, teaches there's a great gulf between the two. And the people in hell could look over to the people in Abraham's bosom. The ones who were saved in the Old Testament sense, who were preserved there until Jesus came, was able to liberate them. So in this story, that once again is not a parable, but a literal story, we read of two people who died, one saved in the Old Testament sense and one lost. And in the heart of the earth they could see one another and they talked. And we see the confession of the man in hell and the torments that he went through. So back to verse 23, 22. The rich man also died and was buried. And the Bible says, And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Terrible torments of hell. For I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now is he comforted, he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went to them from the dead, they will repent. And he said to them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. It's interesting that the poor man here is named in the scriptures, and his name was Lazarus. For we find in Luke, I mean, excuse me, in John chapter 11, there was a man named Lazarus. Some people think it's the same man. Some people think it's a different man with the same name. But Jesus Christ came to that man named Lazarus, in John chapter 11, and rose him from the dead. He loved him so much, the Bible says Jesus wept. And after three days, Jesus Christ rose him from the dead. And just like the passage of Scripture says here, if one rose from the dead, they would not be persuaded. 
You see, the Bible says the Pharisees, when they heard that he had raised Lazarus from the dead, they hated Jesus Christ so much that they wanted to kill Jesus, and they even wanted to kill Lazarus. They didn't want to hear from the mouth of one who was actually there what hell was like. They'd rather kill him than listen to the truth. Well, friend, the Bible here, we read about the rich man and the words of the rich man from hell. What this passage is, is a man in hell talking to us and telling us what hell is like. You should listen. You would do well to hear his confession. I find in this passage three things that this rich man says torment him. These are what I call the torments, the terrible torments of hell. And the first thing we find in this passage that's so horrible is the physical pain and the torment of the flames. Go with me, if you will, to verse 22 again. The rich man also died and was buried. And listen to verse 23. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments. And then in verse 24, he said, For I am tormented in this flame. In this flame. The Bible tells us what hell is. The Bible says it's a flame of fire. Three times the King James Bible uses the term everlasting fire. It's a place of torment, a place of fame, flames, a place where people burn and burn and burn but never burned up. A place where people die but never die. The Bible teaches that we who are people, human beings, have three parts. The Bible teaches that God is a trinity that has three parts. And he said, let us make man in our image. So man has three parts. And the three parts of man are the body, the soul, and the spirit. When you die, it's your body that dies, and what's left behind is the soul and the spirit. If you're saved, the Bible says the Holy Spirit of God comes into you, and so a believer that dies, the Holy Spirit takes his soul to heaven. But if you die and you have not the Holy Spirit of God and your body dies, then your soul goes straight into hell. And this man here tells us what hell is like. It's a place of flames where he's tormented by the fire. I don't know if you've ever gone into the kitchen and turned on the faucet and put your hand under to wash it and maybe you have a really high hot water tank and you burn your hands. And you burn it so bad that you pull back and you say, ah! And that pain lasts for a few seconds. But that pain is only in one part of your body and only for a few seconds. I'd like you to imagine what that would feel like over your entire being. And it's not for a few seconds. It's not for a few minutes. It's not for a few weeks or months or years. It's never ending. It doesn't stop. It goes on and on and on. And that intense pain continues over and over with no rest, no relief. As a younger man, I believe I was about 14, I rode a motorcycle for the first time. don't like motorcycles. They scare me. They're very dangerous. Motorcycle ran out of gas, so I'm taking it back to my uncle's house, pushing it, and I wasn't thinking, and I allowed my thigh to rub up against that hot, hot, hot uh, um, exhaust. And I'm walking, and I'm pushing this motorcycle, and all of a sudden I feel the most intense pain that I've ever felt in my life. And I looked down, and I was letting the motorcycle rub up against my leg, and that exhaust burned through my pants and into my skin, and it burned off several layers of skin. To this day, some 25, 30 years later, I still have a, a little faint scar about that big. Where that muffler burnt through my skin. That was the most intense pain as the flesh peeled off and all the juices of the body started to pour out in the liquid. And I just, unbearable pain. That was just one little place on my body. Can you imagine that kind of pain over your entire being? I don't feel that pain today. It's gone. It's over, but I can remember it. But imagine feeling that pain over every part of your being. And there's no rest. There's no relaxation. There's no relief. There's no getting rid of it. That's forever. Friend, that's what hell's like. Burning and feeling that flame forever. The most, one of the most horrible parts of hell is the torment of the flame. Oh, I wish I could open the floor and 
and pull back the earth and let you peer down into hell, actually smell the sulfur and the, and the smoke come up and look down into that glowing fire so that you can see what people are really going through. People are burning, screaming in pain. Dante, who wrote the Divine Comedy, says this of hell. Their sighs, lamentations, and wailings resounded through the starless air. Starless air, so that at first it made me weep. Strange tongues, horrible languages, words of pain, tones of anger, voices loud and hoarse. And with these the sounds of hands made tumult, which is whirling through the air forever dark. Sand eddies in the whirlwind, abandon all hope, who enter here. Have you ever just sat down and thought about what hell would really be like? Have you ever been inside of a burning building? Have you ever been around a campfire and inhaled some smoke and know what it's like to have that air go inside you and make you cough and feel like you're going to die? Have you ever burned yourself? Hell is ten million times worse than that. St. Francis de Sales, who lived in the 15 and 1600s, said, The damned are in the abyss of hell as within a woeful city. There they suffer unspeakable torments in all their senses and members, because as they have employed all their senses and members in sinning, so shall they suffer in each of them the punishment due to sin. The Roman poet Virgil, who lived thousands of years ago, said, The gates of hell are open night and day. Smooth the descent, and easy is the way. But to return and view the cheerful skies, in this the mighty labor lies. Since the beginning of time, men knew there was a place called hell. Many people just make light of it, don't think about it. Forget about it until the day they die. And then seconds later, they wake up in hell. And they say, oh God, no! No, it's too late! The pain, and the fire, and the heartache, the flames of the damned. Jonathan Edwards was a preacher in the United States of America years ago. He preached during the awakening. He had much revival in his time because he simply preached on hell and told people how to be saved. He wrote a sermon called Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. In that sermon he says, There is nothing that keeps wicked men at any one moment out of hell but the mere pleasure of God. He said, You're hangling, dangling like over a string over hell. And all God's got to do is just cut the string and you'll drop off into hell for all eternity and burn. You know, there's no guarantee of tomorrow. How do you know you're going to live another day? Why don't you prepare? Why don't you get saved? Don't wake up in hell. Mr. Edwards, Pastor Jonathan Edwards said, The wrath of God burns against them. Their damnation does not slumber. The pit is prepared. The fire is made ready. The furnace is now hot ready to receive them. The flames do now glow and rage. The glittering sword is wetted and welled over them, and the pit hath opened its mouth under them. He said, you have reason to wonder that you are not in hell already. You ever think of a time in your life where you should have died, but you're still alive? Something miraculous took place where you, you most likely should have died, but something took place. You ever think maybe that was God giving you an upper, another opportunity? to be saved. You say, oh, I don't still won't believe in hell. Well, you will. You will be a believer soon if you die without Jesus Christ and burn in hell for all eternity. Hell is a place where the, where the bottle is never touched, where the sun never shines, where birds never sink. Hell is a place where you'll never see the beauty of a rose or hear the cry of a newborn babe. Hell is a place where atheists become believers where condemned sinners get concerned for their parents, where fathers weep in the presence of their children, where you'll pray and pray and pray, but God will never hear your prayer. A place where an altar is never found, where a sinner will never find the grace of God, and where God will never give you mercy. Matthew 8, 12 says it's a place of weeping, and wailing, and gnashing of teeth. Sound like somewhere you want to go? All you rock and roll fans, they make fun of hell and say, Oh, we're going to hell with Satan and have a big old party. We're just going to have a great party in hell. I say unto you, hell is not a party. It's torment. It's pain. It's anguish. It's suffering. It's burning in the fiery pits of hell. 
in the smokestacks of the damned. Not a place you want to go. So the first torment of hell is the torment of being in fire with no release, with no way out. Suffering and burning and feeling in you all that pain as you burn next to someone next to you. And you hear the cries and the screams. That's what hell is like. But there's another torment of hell. And that's the torment of knowing that the people you love will probably end up there as well. Let's go back to our passage in Luke chapter 16. In Luke chapter 16, the rich man says, in verse 27, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him, Lazarus, to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest that they also come to this place of torment. If the fiery flames licking your never-dying soul for all eternity wasn't enough, torment. There's another torment, an emotional torment, the torment of knowing that you're not alone. That because you were a lost sinner that never came to Jesus, that most likely your son or your daughter or your mama or your daddy, they never came to Jesus because you never told them how to be saved. And so you're in hell and you're burning and you think, oh God, my son's going to be here. Oh God, my mom's going to come here with me. Oh God, my loved ones are coming to this same place of torment. I don't want them here. Oh God, warn them. But it's too late. A lot of people don't realize that the way you live your life affects others. You get saved, you can preach to others and get them saved. But if you're lost, how many people are you taking to hell with you? Can you imagine how horrible it be, must be to be in hell, to die and to wake up in hell and feel all that pain and then to realize, oh no, my wife is coming here too. Oh no, my husband is going to, my grandmother is going to be here. Oh my God, why didn't I get saved? Sometimes we forget who exactly is in hell. There's good people in hell, sweet people in hell, precious old people, courteous people. Obedient children, hard-working men, clean parents, good citizens, those who are kind to society, friendly people are in hell. Because why do you go to hell for rejecting Jesus Christ? Some of the nicest, sweetest people that ever lived never trusted Jesus as their Savior. And they're in hell today right alongside the most wicked biker and bank robber and murderer and rapist burning in the pits of hell side by side. What a horrible torment of feeling the flames. What a horrible torment of knowing that someone you love is going to join you in the same place. The terrible, terrible torments of hell. Well, let's look at another one. Let's go back to uh, the passage here in Luke chapter 16. Verse 29, Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear him, them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said to them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they persuade it, the one rose from the dead. So even if you could get out of hell and go tell people what it was like, most people wouldn't believe. It's a horrible thing to be tormented in the flames. A horrible thing to be tormented knowing that someday your family will come. But you know what the worst torment of all will be? is knowing that once you're in hell, there's no way out. You see, God said that you either get saved and go to heaven with Him, or you go to hell. And when you're in hell, that's it. There's no such thing as purgatory. It's not in the Bible. There's some that believe, well, you know, if you will go to hell, you'll pay for your sins for a little while, and then, you know, after a little while, God will let you out. That's not true. Once you're there, that's it. Now, eventually, one day, you will come out, before the judgment and be judged before an almighty God. And then the Bible says he'll cast you into the lake of fire. You see, when a person goes to hell, it's because they rejected Jesus Christ. And they're going to burn there. But one day, the Bible tells us there's what's called the great white throne of judgment, in which God is going to judge all the people that are in hell. And then he's going to take them and cast them straight into the lake of fire. There is a difference between hell and the lake of fire. Wouldn't it be awful to know if you wake up in hell tomorrow, not only that your family is going to join you, but that when you're there, you're there forever. 
And that once you're there, there's no escape. There's no way to get to heaven after you've gone to hell. That's why God gives you an opportunity here on earth to be saved. Let me read you Revelation chapter 20. There's only one time that you'll get out, and that's to stand before God and give account of everything you've ever done. All you've done will be presented. Every time you committed adultery, every act of fornication, every lie, every evil, wicked thing, every time you stole or said a cuss word, you'll give account to God. And I bet you'll be so ashamed you'll say amen when he casts you back into hell, back into the lake of fire for all eternity. Imagine standing before a holy God and having to give account for everything you've ever done. Revelation chapter 20, the Bible says that someday this judgment will come to pass for those who are in hell. And it says in verse 11 of Revelation 20, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, on it, and whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead both small and great, stand before God. The books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And it says in verse 14, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I forgot to read verse 13. And hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. So if you die and you go to hell, that's it. There's no salvation. One day, God will take you and put you before him and say, give account of yourself. Tell me why you think you should make it to heaven. Let's look at everything you've ever done. You'll be so ashamed for your sins. And God will say, look, you could have gone to heaven with me. God will say, hey, I made a way. I died on the cross of Calvary, and I made a way for you to come to me. But you made light of it. You laughed, and you mocked, you made fun of Jesus Christ. So bye-bye. And the Bible says that Jesus Christ will say unto that sinner, Depart from me, you accursed into everlasting fire. And that's where they'll go, who go to hell. What a horrible torment to feel the flames. You know, if hell was only for a thousand years, it wouldn't be so bad. If hell was only for... A million years. I guess it wouldn't be too bad because you know that, hey, eventually I'm looking forward to that time, I'll get out. But hell is forever. There's no way out. What a horrible torment. Not only going and burning in that flame for all eternity and knowing someday your family will join you, but what's worse is sitting there knowing there's no end to this. This is forever. You see, God is eternal. If you sin against an eternal God, then you're going to pay for it for all eternity. That's how God works. But yet he made a way. He made a way to be saved. You don't have to go to hell. According to a conservative survey about 20, 25, 30 years ago, they said that about 12,985 people die and go to hell every day. Another survey said that two people die every second and go to hell. That's an old number. Probably twice that now. Every second that I speak unto you, there's four or five people dropping off into hell as we speak. Can you imagine if you could look into the spirit world and you could actually go down and look into hell and just see the people dropping down into hell, just dropping like a, like a drop of water? Can you imagine all those people? Do you want to be one of them? There were some famous atheists who died. And as they died on their deathbed, their whole life they denied Jesus Christ and pretended that God didn't exist. And then when they died, they realized they were wrong. Dr. Talley died screaming, I am lost! I am lost. Jean, Jeannie O'Gordon screamed out on her deathbed, or his, I am suffering the pangs of the damned. A Dr. Gibson who died screamed, pull me out of the fire. I'm being pulled down into the darkness, wrapped in chains of hell. His entire life denying God, denying the Bible. And when he dies, he confesses, I'm being pulled down to hell and I can feel it. Are you saved? 
Where will you spend eternity? Heaven or hell? Smoking or non-smoking? Where do you want to be? I say that all these and more are now suffering the flames of the charred walls of hell. Falling backwards through the blackened midnights of the bottomless pit, and as the fires of hell devour their immortal souls, they are suffering the pangs of the damned and the burnings of the wrath of a sovereign God. If you die without God, the flames of hell will lick your never-dying soul throughout all eternity, and you'll never have a drop of water to cool your parched tongue. You better think about it. Where will I spend eternity? Where am I going to go when I die? There's one or two places, either heaven or hell. I'm going to tell you about how to get to heaven here in a second. But I want to sing an old hymn first. Way back up in the hollers of North Carolina or South Carolina someplace, the mountain folks wrote this little song about hell. And it's not just a song about hell, but it's a song about being delivered from hell, being saved. It goes like this. There is a place somewhere below I've heard it read about. They say that people when they go will never come back out. A place of torment for lost souls who turn the Lord away. They say the fire burns all night because there is no day. But I escaped that awful place when Jesus saved my soul. And not one hair upon my head will ever that place go. So I don't have to worry, see, the Savior took my part. The only fire I'll ever feel is burning in my heart. Eternal life was given me when I was born again. The Lord applied His precious blood and cleansed me from all sin. He left a spark that satisfied my hungry soul's desire. That precious blood that saved my soul will keep me from the fire. For I escaped that awful place when Jesus saved my soul. And not one hair upon my head will enter that place go. So I don't have to worry, see, the Savior took my part. The only fire I'll ever feel is burning in my heart. What an amazing song. A song of victory. A song of salvation. Of knowing, hey, I don't have to go down to this fire and flame and burn. I have someone that did something for me to keep me out of here. Who is that someone? The Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to go with me. If you have your Bible, to First Peter. Chapter 3, verse 18. Then we'll go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. I would be amiss to tell you about hell and then not tell you how to get out of hell. You see, you don't have to go to hell. Jesus paid for your sins on the cross of Calvary. And in 1 Peter chapter 3, in verse 18, we find what Jesus did and why. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, the Bible says, For Christ hath also once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ suffered in our place on the cross. Why did he suffer? He suffered for sins. Jesus Christ died for all the sins of the world. you got a choice. You can come to Him who died and suffered for you, and the reason He did it was to take you to heaven with Him, or you can suffer for your own sins in hell. Why would anyone choose this option? Why would anyone say, I don't want Jesus, I'd rather pay for myself. Thank you very much. Why would anyone want to reject Jesus Christ? 
1 Corinthians chapter 15, the Bible tells us the gospel. And I know this message is more for lost people, but if you're saved, you need to take this message to, to loved ones. Make a copy of it on DVD or something and pass it out. People need to hear the truth of salvation. For very few today, very few churches even preach the gospel, the way of salvation. What is the gospel? 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you. Saved from hell. How do you get saved from hell? Well, let's read the rest of the passage. Don't you want to be saved? Over here, you're lost. Eternally lost. But through Christ, you can be saved from hell. Verse 3, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. That he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. Christ died for our sins. Why do you want to pay for your sins in hell? When Jesus Christ paid for them on the cross. The Bible said Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. The Bible says that Jesus Christ was God manifest in the flesh. God loved you enough to die in your place for your sins. Now the question is, what will you do with Jesus? The Bible says, Behold, now is the day of salvation. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. If you're lost, you need to get saved, and you need to get saved today. The only way to be saved is by faith, trusting in what Jesus Christ did. Trust the finished work. Trust the blood atonement. If you want to know more, go to thecloudchurch.org. Past sermons. The first sermon ever preached was on the gospel. Then we have another sermon on, on the blood atonement of Jesus. All about salvation, how to be saved. Because if you're not saved, that's your eternal destiny. I don't want you to go there. Jesus doesn't want you to go there. Jesus would rather die than see anybody go to hell. And that's exactly what he did. He died in your place for your sins so you don't have to go there. At the end of this message, I'm going to put the sounds of hell. So stay tuned to the end of this message and listen to the sounds of hell. And if you're saved, praise God. Maybe this message will help you want to win people to Jesus Christ, go out with the gospel message, because I care about souls and I don't want to see them in hell. But if you're lost, you need to get saved. We encourage you to go to thecloudchurch.org and look out how to be saved. So here at the end of this message, you'll hear the sounds of hell.